Did you mess up your painting? In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix it. Okay, so in this painting here, um, I'm getting close to my last layer of fine detail, but I noticed something that I have to change. It, it has to change, and it's this area right here, my focal point, in fact. I have created, at least to me, looks like an octopus. I've got the head here, <laughs> the eyes, and the head, and I've got the tentacles right here. It's the same size and shape. I mean, that's a beginner's mistake. And when I was a beginner, I did this kind of thing all the time, repeating the same shape over and over and over. Same size, same shape. And I need to change it. So how do I do that? This is dry. It has, I haven't worked on it for a few months. Uh, so do I just paint over it? Or do I, I don't know, scrape it down? Try, you can paint over it. Um, but it's not the best thing to do. If you really want to get rid of it, it's good to scrape it down. But how do you scrape down a painting that's already dry? Yeah, good question. I'm gonna have to take this off the easel. I'm gonna lay it flat and let's see what we can do. Uh, I've laid it down on uh, my, my desk, my palette desk. Uh, and I'm going to just, I'm just going to get rid of this. And how do you do that? Well, first of all, you want a clean brush. And I'm going to use this one here. Um, it's small because I don't need a big spot. And I'm just dipping it in turpentine let me show you and dip it in turpentine and don't want it soaking I don't want it dripping down on my painting I just want I want it to be kind of damp and I'm gonna come in and just get rid of these octopus tentacles just gonna let it soak in I'm going to leave this last one here because it might work in the end. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm going to get rid of all of this and just let it sit. I'm putting just a little bit more on the brush, a bit more turpentine. And OK, let's see what happens. Okay, so I've been uh, periodically coming in and adding more turpentine to loosen up a little bit and uh, so I can scrape it off. There's a couple ways uh, to do this. Usually I just take a palette knife and just kind of scrape lightly not at like a 90 degree angle maybe like a 45 degree angle so i can get most of the paint off i don't need to get it all off I'm 
And I do want to thin it down to basically the first layer of paint. And to um, give it back to a place where no real brush strokes are going to come through or So that's feeling really flat and all the extra paint is off compared to some other areas where there's uh, a lot of impasto uh, paint. Um, and this can be worked with now. I can add more variation in the shape and kind of put it together in a better way. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so here I'm just beginning to add in um, some of the darker colors of the sea breaking up the uh, octopus tentacles and kind of playing around with how I want it to look and what will work and what won't. I have to remember that uh, rocks that are down next to the water are darker um, as the sea is constantly on them uh, keeping them wet and uh, uh, and it gives them this uh, darker burnt umber look which i absolutely love next to the more yellow ochre color of the the same rocks higher above and I'm wanting to uh, also create more depth in the rocks, giving them more shadow and creating more excitement. Adding in some seawater, giving a sense of the sea playing in and out between these rocks. It's really quite beautiful every time I look and paint this scene. It's right outside my kitchen door and um, I just I just love painting these headlands. I'm beginning to work in the, the foam where the water will be hitting the rocks and where it will be foam and where it won't be. Uh, you have to be careful to make sure that the foam color is um, cooler in the shadowed area to help give a three-dimensional feel to it. Bringing in a mid-tone, about a, a three on the value scale, maybe a four, uh, looks like a three, and just uh, defining the sunlit areas of the rocks, trying to get a better shape. Already the octopus is pretty much gone happy about that. Getting some thick paint of a higher value to bring out the focal point. really not that much to do but just um, a short time we can um, we can get the painting on a good level and here in the background I'm uh, deepening the shadows just a little bit and um, bringing uh, more of the yellow ochre 
which I will be doing in a second, uh, to connect them, uh, to bring that back headland just a little bit closer because in real life it's not that far away. But I also don't want to compromise the, um, the sense of depth that this back headland brings. Smudging with the finger is a wonderful tool. Our fingers, in fact, are the best tools that we have, even in painting. I um, am pretty happy with this particular painting with the shapes and uh, except for the octopus but uh, there you see I'm adding a little bit of the yellow ochre to um, bring it closer and connect it more with the front headland so that there is more of a sense of continuity and realism for this painting and um, yeah, coming to, to the end. And isn't it lovely that with such, uh, you know, a wide range of values and uh, possibilities, but yet uh, using a limited palette just have such beautiful um, effects for your painting. I guess I'm kind of cut off here. Sorry about that. I'll watch that out for the my next video. But um, I didn't really do hardly anything over on that side of the painting. Everything was focused here on the octopus. There's some sparkles of the water which uh, just adds such a beautiful little pizzazz to the painting. And here you can see I'm adding a sharper white for the water breaking on the rocks in my focal area and as you notice I am not doing the same thing on the other corner there on the far right just here this is where I want the eye to go where I want the playful exploration to be the sense of oh isn't that wonderful Now here, uh, I changed that um, white, it's about as a value two up at the uh, top there uh, after the filming and um, uh, toned down that little speck there because as you can see it immediately pulls the eye because of the dark contrast of the brush, uh, the weeds in the brush that is uh, on the shadow side of uh, that little cliff area. Um, I, I didn't notice it while I was painting. Or perhaps I did and then thought I will, I'll fix it and then forgot to do that. But in any case, it is fixed now, uh, toned down and has disappeared into the um, into the brushwork. Like I said, I want my focal point down by the water. All right. Um, so I think this is looking a lot better and is uh, no longer an octopus. And you can see how easily it is 
to adjust your painting to make it work better. And I'm bringing down the, um, the eye to come into this area here. Uh, in the beginning, I uh, was planning on this being the focal point because I was working on uh, the general line of thirds and this will put it in the third, but I'm gonna move it down here more into the Fibonacci area. This would be um, roughly the Fibonacci spot. And it's more interesting here. This is where the waves are coming and crashing up and you're getting your first um, uh, splash of light. So how do you make it more interesting here? Um, that's just a real quick thing. You want your lightest light and your darkest dark uh, right next to each other to create a strong contrast. That's one way to do it. There are other ways, but uh, that is the easiest one to begin working with, um, in my opinion. So, um, so I'm going to leave it there. I think it's looking pretty good and I may, I may be getting very close to signing this painting. Okay. So that's it for today. I think I took care of it and you know, um, I'll keep working on it and looking at it and making sure I've got it all the way I want it to, but I'm pretty happy with the outcome so far. Uh, the plan was to get rid of the octopus and the octopus is gone. I don't, I no longer see it. Maybe this area, mm, I might work with that a little bit more, but for now, I'm really happy with the way the, the seawater uh, came out and is working. So great. There we go. So anytime you want to change a painting, it's really not that difficult. Acrylics are super easy. You just paint over it and it's no problem. With oil paints, it's good to scrape back to get rid of rather than just painting over. You can, uh, but if you want to move up into um, a stronger painting, get rid of it, scrape it back, bring it back down to the beginning layers of paint and then work the painting again. If you like what you're learning here, please click the subscribe button and help me get up to a thousand subscribers so that I can begin um, moving this channel forward. And if you need any help, please leave a comment below and let's get in touch. Let's talk. If I'm able to help you, I would be very happy to uh to do to do so so um have a beautiful 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 day be inspired be creative be you